Hey guys, for this video I'd like to do another chapter of How We Met. I'll have to give a little bit of backstory since we don't actually have a junior year for How We Met video yet. Alright, so one day in early spring of junior year, my dad came in to visit, take me out to lunch. Have you ever been straight down here? This is what Myrtle Avenue looked like in the early 2000s. It looks nothing like this anymore. We went to Junior's for lunch. We love Junior's. And good old Toys R Us. Junior's is in downtown Brooklyn near the Brooklyn Bridge. After lunch, we continued on and had a little adventure. We went to Coney Island. I'd never been there before, and I'm sure my dad hadn't been there in ages. There's the cyclone. I really enjoyed my visit to Coney Island with Dad. It was beautiful. This is gorgeous. So that was my first visit to Coney Island. I'd like to go back there sometime. So all through college, I had a girlfriend. Mia had a boyfriend. We were both in pretty serious relationships. At one point, both of us thought that we might eventually get married to the person that we were with at the time. The other relationships that both Mia and I were in at the time also had some issues. Unfortunately, I think the most interesting things should probably be omitted from these videos, but um, <laughs> the summer leading into senior year should have been a very nice summer for me and my then girlfriend. And she had some other things that she was dealing with. It, it got bad over the summer. And she wasn't really ready to admit what the actual problem was towards the end of the summer, even though it was very clear and something that she had been dealing with even before she met me. But she decided that she was going to try to get rid of everything else in her life that could possibly cause her any stress before actually admitting what the thing was. So she decided that maybe we should go on a break, which at the time was, was mutual. Uh, I mean, I was, I was on one hand being understanding and sympathetic, but I was not thrilled either. So it was kind of a mutual, we, we should take a break. And the very same day we took a break, this guy who had been hitting on her at the Jersey Shore asked her out. She said no. Summer was over and it was time for college and I was getting ready to go back to Pratt and she had her college in New Jersey, not far from where I lived with my parents at the time. She went back to her school first and immediately missed me. She called me up. She wanted me to come pick her up and take her out, and <laughs> I, I had to think about it for a minute. I wasn't sure I wanted to, but I, I ended up going. I picked her up at the South Orange Dunkin' Donuts, and she was with some of the girls she knew from college, and she very excitedly introduced me to them as her boyfriend, as though nothing had happened. And then the next day, my dad drove me back to Pratt. It was nice to be back with my Pratt friends. We're a fun, interesting group. <laughs> Corey was now a vegan, and his new diet had some unpleasant side effects for Mia, Jerry, and I. <laughs> Jerry's picking his nose. <laughs> or am I? <laughs> <laughs> On September 3rd, my girlfriend took the train into New York with some of her college friends. Mario, just friend 2002 and we're stopping people on the streets left and right here at Times Square. I'm hanging out with these two girls. What are your names? And she wanted to come see me in Brooklyn with uh, some of the girls. It ended up being just one girl. I don't know what happened but two of them left in the subway so it was just my girlfriend at the time and this one other girl. So <laughs> I still remember this so clearly. She called me to let me know she was here and I came down from the dorm to meet her and she had a big Toys R Us bag <laughs> with it. and she was walking towards me with a big smile on her face and I'm like Toys R Us! <laughs> it was a peace offering. She walked up to me and she hand me, handed me the bag. And I was like, toys! And I look in the bag and it's this doll, like a walking doll. And she bends down to tie her shoe. 
the bag wasn't for me. It was for some other girl at her school. It was like a joke gift or something. I was like, oh, that, well, that, that wasn't Power Rangers. <laughs> she and this other girl came up to our dorm and met Mia and Jerry and Corey. Uh, Julie wasn't there at the time. <laughs> okay, this is how you eat a pixie stick. Ready? Put up on the top. You're not watching. You're not watching. Okay. But then you have to like look at the ceiling. So look at the ceiling. You're saying that's the way you do it? <laughs> Turn that on. <laughs> is it empty? No. I mean, is it soggy right there? <laughs> Nibble that part off. That will Don't rip it off. It's going to go. There you go. Try it. There you go. <laughs> Don't touch it with your tongue. <laughs> now wiggle it around Aww. with your fingers. There you so go. Cute. <laughs> you missed it out. <laughs> Had my girlfriend's friend just been some girl in our class, I might have liked her, or at least not minded her. But she was, like, my girlfriend at the time was kind of being exactly like this girl. who was She was, like, a little bit intense. I don't think the pixie stick video really does it justice. Like, it, they got progressively more crazy as the night went on. We all went out to Myrtle Avenue to get pizza. We went to Liberty Pizza. Me, Mia, Jerry, Corey, and the two girls. And, like, they were well ahead of the rest of us, and I was, I was the last and I was probably visibly upset. Things weren't going well with her relationship and now she was like becoming some other person who I kind of couldn't stand. <laughs> and we still hadn't resolved anything. Yeah, I was, I was upset. She didn't notice, but Mia did. <laughs> so while we were walking to, to Liberty Pizza for dinner, Mia kind of walked behind with me and everyone else went ahead. Well, actually, eventually Corey and Jerry noticed as well. The two the two girls had already made it into the restaurant and had ordered. We sat across from each other, right? Yeah. And I remember kind of having a conversation just by looking at you. We didn't say anything. Yeah, we had a conversation with our eyes. Yes. We made it through the entire dinner without my girlfriend noticing that there was any problem with me or that Mia and I were sort of flirting. <laughs> I don't know what we were doing, but something was happening. <laughs> at that table and... and oblivious to it. So we, we got back to the dorm and it was starting to get late now. And I still wanted to try to talk to my girlfriend. And Mia and Jerry and Corey tried to take the other girl to meet Julie to give us alone time. Julie wasn't home. Thanks, Julie. So what happened? You guys ended up playing Boggle? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, we were just hanging out. So, I mean, like, the other girl, like, she wasn't a like bad purse or anything, it just no. We had a good time. Yeah, like she probably would have been fun in a different setting. Hell yeah! Yeah, where are you? Well, yeah, it was weird how your girlfriend. It was like she became this girl. That girl was giving me a headache. <laughs> <laughs> but for me and Jerry, it was a good time. <laughs> so my girlfriend and I had a long time for a little while, and we talked and just kind of went in circles. Nothing really got resolved. Eventually, they left. Then it was the next day. So they they had gone back to New Jersey and back to their college. And it was a beautiful, beautiful September day in Brooklyn. To me, it felt like a Coney Island day. Corey, I think, was at class. Jerry wasn't around. Julie, well, you don't go anywhere with Julie. You guys know Julie. <laughs> you son of a bitch! But I didn't want to go by myself, so I was thinking maybe Mia? I don't think we'd ever left campus together, right? Right. Beyond Myrtle. Well, we never really did anything together outside of our group. Like, Mia was somebody who I liked, but she was like a friend that I hang out with other friends present. Like, the two of us didn't really hang out that much on our own. Wasn't there a Seinfeld about that? I think there was. I think Elaine and George were. Oh, that yeah, that, <laughs> that that sounds about right. They, they never hung out, just the two of them. Okay, so similar deal <laughs> with me and Mia up until senior year. I knocked on Mia's door. That was like kind of weird that I, 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 I don't know, I did it. I just thought maybe Mia would like to go to Coney Island with me. I was very out of character at the time, I guess, but I guess, I guess following the previous night, I felt more comfortable doing that. So I, I knocked on Mia's door. Mia was the girl across the hall. <laughs> And Mia's cute roommate came to the door in her underwear. <laughs> yeah, she was always in her underwear. Yeah, my roommate, who was in their underwear, was not as good as your roommate. And <laughs> I would have swapped. 
and the tidy whities <laughs> you, you definitely got the better deal, Mia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I asked Mia, and she said yes. And that was also kind of out of character for me. Yeah. Because I'm kind of shy. And... You? The two of us went to Coney Island together, and of course the entire subway there, we talked about relationship stuff, because we had a lot of things that overlapped. Mia was still together with her boyfriend at the time. I didn't care for him, I'll be honest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So for the first time ever, Mia and I left Pratt together, got on the subway, took the train all the way to the end of the line, Coney Island. Mia and I spent the entire day at Coney Island. We checked out their arcade. We laughed at their funny bumper car sign. <laughs> and then Mia found soft-serve pistachio ice cream. That was wonderful. Mia liked that. <laughs> we learned that Julie had an exhibit. <laughs> we walked on the beach. We spent the entire day and evening together. Mia's very fun and very easy to be with. It was a very nice trip to Coney Island, but I had fun with Mia. While we were there, I got a phone call from my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I didn't feel like talking because I, I was hanging out with Mia. <laughs> and she asked, she asked where I was and what I was doing. I said I was at Coney Island. And she just assumed that I wasn't there by myself. And she asked me who I was with. And I said, Mia. <laughs> and I, I think, if I recall, she went, great. <laughs> I think this was just kind of a turning point for us because it was, you know, the first time we'd hung out by ourselves without the rest of the group. And I don't know, it was just, we were enjoying each other and we were both kind of thinking, why can't our relationships be more like this without so much drama? That's, of course, not the end of the story. That's really just the beginning of the Bermia story. Although, junior year, we sort of had a story, too, but it wasn't... It was more like just um, getting to know each other a little bit better. Okay, let's go back to sophomore year a little bit for anybody that's new or just forgot. Sophomore year, I was Corey's roommate for the first year. We were sweet mates our freshman year, so we had already known each other and mutually requested to be roommates the following year. Corey can be a little bit sneaky and insecure at times. So fall of our sophomore year was the first year that we were all in a class together. Me, Mia, Jerry, Corey, Julie. Mia was in this class, in our filmmaking class, I think it was. Okay, so one day Mia comes into class, it was Halloween, and she wore this really kind of sexy outfit with these black tight pants, shiny pants, which today I'm sure would have resulted in many Mia Thick comments. <laughs> <laughs> we went back to the dorm that night, and I'm sure it's a little fuzzy, but knowing Corey, it probably went like this. He probably asked, hey, Bruno, what do what, you think of Mia in those uh, sexy pants? You know, to get a reaction out of me. Not just like guys being guys kind of thing. For Corey, it was more being sneaky to kind of get an idea whether or not I liked Mia. As though, you know, is Bruno posing a threat or any kind of competition kind of deal? Not just what do you think of Mia in those sexy pants? At that time, Corey had already met my girlfriend. He knew that I was in a relationship with somebody, and I certainly wasn't looking to, you know, to go meet other girls on campus. That's not really my thing. Like, I like to be in a, in a relationship. I'm not looking to just meet random girls, even though I did think Mia was cute, but nothing beyond that. Um, and I knew that she had, she was in a relationship. I didn't know her that well, but th like, there was no, I'm thinking about getting with Mia kind of thought in my head. But yes, I did notice. <laughs> <laughs> I did notice the pants. They were very good. I I'm sure I responded to Corey saying something like, yeah, she looked really good in the sexy pants. So Corey probably heard that and freaked out. Once he knew that, that I found her attractive, he's like, okay, so my friend Mia is going to stay separate from my friend Bruno. She they, they can't get together. So Corey, even though there was nothing going on... <laughs> did everything in his power to keep us separated. So, uh, like, Mia was dealing with, with her boyfriend at the time, and uh, I think they were broken up or breaking up. She wasn't happy, so she would talk to Corey, and, and everything, every time 
she says something about her boyfriend, Corey would be like, oh, yeah, yeah, Bruno always does that that crap man to, to his girlfriend. Yeah, that, that sounds just like Bruno. He just made sure that Mia and then Julie as well, because Julie was Mia's roommate, would be like very suspicious and cautious of me. And they wouldn't want to have anything to do with me. So he would go, you know, go hang out with them. And then he'd come back and hang out with me. But we were never really together. Junior year, Mia and I ended up getting together in a situation where we ended up talking about Corey and exchanging stories from sophomore year. And then we figured out what had been happening. <laughs> it was late at night. And Mia had come into our dorm, the Bruno Corey dorm from across the hall. And she wanted someone to go to Myrtle Avenue with her to get Chinese food. And it was, I, I want to say it was like 10 or 11 o'clock. And Corey, this is Corey. He had already taken his shoes off. So that's it. He's in for the night. Can't put the shoes back on. <laughs> I didn't feel like going anywhere either. Mia had actually yelled at me sophomore year. I didn't know what was going on. And uh, Corey tried to ask her out. She didn't want to go out with Corey. Corey was all upset. I went like an idiot to Mia's room at the end of sophomore year to try to talk to her about maybe, you know, I don't know what giving Corey another chance or something because he was upset. And Mia, I was like the last person she wanted to see. She yelled at me. She kicked me out of her room. She slammed the door at me. <laughs> so now, now it was junior year. Mia wanted to go out to Myrtle Avenue, get Chinese food. And I wouldn't have gone otherwise, but I didn't want her to go by herself to Myrtle at night. Because, I mean, we love Myrtle, but sometimes it wasn't always so safe. Like you could go a few blocks and then that way. And uh, maybe not come back. <laughs> I went with her just as kind of protection. And I remember like we walked to from the dorm all the way to the restaurant. It's like total silence, maybe a little awkward silence. Mia ordered and then she came and she addressed a rumor. See, Mia had made a comment not too long before that I had nice feet for a guy. Corey flipped out, even though there was nothing going on between Mia and Corey, but... He's like, oh no, Mia's flirting with with uh, Bruno. They like each other. Something, And he still, I guess, thought he had a chance with her. I don't know. One night, my girlfriend had called the dorm looking for me. I don't know where I was, but Corey answered. Maybe I was at class. And he had said something to her about, you know, there might be something going on with, with Bruno and Mia. Because he knew that if he planted that seed with her, it would eventually get back to him. And he'd find out without having to ask me if there was actually something going on. He's just... <laughs> oh, Corey. Anyway, so we're, we're sitting in the restaurant. And Mia comes up to me and she's like, just just so we're clear, I wasn't flirting with you. And I go, oh, I know. That's just Corey. You know how Corey is. Maybe she said, how is Corey? And we just started talking about Corey. From the restaurant back to the dorm, I went up to her room. We went to her kitchen, kept talking about Corey. She's eating her Chinese food. Next thing we know, it's like four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and the whole time we've just been exchanging sophomore year Corey stories. So we, we got that all figured out. Corey locked the door to go to bed and I didn't have a key. So I must have knocked at the door at like 4.30 in the morning. And he's like, Bruno, where, where were you, man? I was like, I've been with Mia the whole time. <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he didn't like that. Wow, I've been talking for a long time. So anyway, Mia and I figured that out junior year. And then we were like friendlier throughout junior year. But it wasn't really till soft, till, uh, sorry senior year that, that um, anyone really had anything to worry about. Because my, my girlfriend at the time, too, like... If we would fight and I, and we would try to, like, I always wanted to try, try to resolve things. And her response would usually be more like, well, why don't you date Mia? For those, those stories and more, it's like there wasn't really anything there that other people sort of willed into existence. And tried, like, they tried to prevent something that, that wasn't really going to happen. And eventually it did. Anyway, so that's the story for now. And now this video is going to be really long. All right, I'm going to end here. I guess we'll see how this video does. I imagine most people left a long time ago, but I guess you'll let me know if you enjoyed it. I'm going to end here. Thank you guys for watching. Good night.